Hi everyone, it's Russell Lowe speaking, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a sketch axonometric in Illustrator. Uh, I've experimented with a few different ways to do this, and I think this is the best, but, uh, uh, but I'm sure there are other approaches, and there might even be better approaches, so if you've got any ideas about that, then please uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, so today we're going to create the series of blocks and this sort of cylindrical chimney shape. Uh, and I'll get started by uh, deleting everything. Right, so uh, grab a rectangle a tool, drag myself out a rectangle, and I've got no fill and a uh, black stroke selected. I'll mouse near the uh, near the anchor point on the corner, which allows me to spin it. And classic axonometrics at 45, which is good because that's where uh, Illustrator snaps to if you hold down shift and uh, selection tool again I'll just move this down move this down sort of here and then with uh, shift uh, actually with alt and shift selected I can drag out the bottom side of my uh, rectangular prism. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is create a, a line segment and I'm going to go from that anchor point I'm going to click and drag actually. I just click then and it would allow me to select a or create a, a line of a particular length. But in this case, I'm just sketching this out uh, and I'll just join up these ones here. And you can see now I've got a, a, a rectangular prism. I haven't drawn this back line in here, although I could so that now it looks like it's uh, transparent and and with that sort of optical effect it, it could be reversed inside out you know that kind of thing uh, what I'll do next is I'll select everything and I'll use the shape builder tool and the shape builder tool as you mouse over things it actually joins shapes together so let's uh, um, click and drag and as I drag out Let's join those together. Now I'll click and drag across here and click and drag across here and you can see I've created a much more obvious uh, rectilinear shape. So let's keep building. I go back to the rectangle tool. Now uh, if I want to snap to, um, uh, to line sometimes it's good to uh, add an anchor point to that and you can add an anchor point uh, here using the pen tool. But let's uh, keep going until I need to do that. Uh, so I've drawn out a, a rectangle, I've snapped that anchor point to this line which it's done nicely and now I'm going to hit the, uh, I'll select it, hit the R key to rotate. I'm going to grab the center and shift it and snap it to that anchor point and then I'll grab anywhere on this line and or maybe this line's better because then I can snap it to there uh, to that line there and you can see I've been able to rotate it so that it lines up perfectly with my um, uh, my line or I guess I could have uh, just gone here and then held shift down and then uh, okay so I want to shift this via its anchor point. So I need to turn off the bounding box uh, and I can do that go view uh, hide bounding box which is shift uh, control V or uh, shift uh, command V on a Mac. Uh, so let's try that again. I want to use this line, this anchor point to shift it with so shift control B turns that off. Now I can grab that anchor point and you can see it's not quite snapping to the line like I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here, uh, click on the add anchor point. I'm going to say I want it to go there. Then I'll grab this again. And now it should find that anchor point. It's not finding it. Why isn't it finding it? It's there. Okay, maybe I'm just not close enough. There we go. You can see the uh, selection arrow has changed color, so it's snapped to it. Sometimes it's fussy, but uh, persevere and you'll be fine. I might just grab these 
uh, these points here are not the shape in the background so I'll just grab that one and shift in that one and drag this out using a shift to keep it on the same line and that way it goes right past the end there so not quite so confusing here uh, selection tool click alt and shift allows me to bring that up obviously don't take it off the there we go side of the window uh, then lines once again don't just click otherwise it'll give you a, a length uh, option and an angle option go cancel click and drag and click and drag click and drag snapping to the anchor points and I'll do uh, another one down here so it's intersecting with the pathway there same sort of deal maybe make that long like that I hit the R key to rotate shift that center of rotation to that point there um, I've got the uh, I've got the bounding box turned off so I don't get my rotate uh, options as I mouse on the corner but let's see that's quite good and hold down shift so it snaps to 45 and then selection tool move it up uh, hold down alt and shift to keep it in line say to there more lines keep doing that don't I and okay uh, should we do one more let's try just with the line segment tool click and drag out to here hold down shift click and drag out to here click and drag to there and I will complete the shape and then I probably need to join these so if I right click and go join now if I have the direct selection tool which is A and only one point selected you can see that it's actually joined up so now it's all selected go back to the regular selection tool and then uh, alt and and shift makes it go up to there and some more lines <laughs> always not clicking and dragging with lines There we go, and uh, let's show you a um, an ellipse. So Shift and Alt lets you draw the circle, lets you draw a perfect circle, and from the center. Uh, once again, Alt and Shift lets you drag that up, and some lines. Could I remember to click and drag that time? Anyway, this is our uh, this is our shape all sort of sketched in, uh, but we've got to go and use the shape builder tool uh, to delete all of those hidden lines. So uh, shape build. So we've got to first select everything, and then hit the shape builder tool and start drawing these things together. Now. You know what? I'm not going to connect those together. You can see the red line around the outside shows you your finished shape. So this in here. There. Got to get rid of these ones. If it looks funny at some point, this might be a hollow end. Actually, let's leave that as a, as a hollow end. Uh, now, I said I wasn't going to do this one. And the reason why is that I don't know exactly where I want to place this shape on the top surface here. So if I use the Shape Builder tool, it would cut it out from this back surface and I'd be a bit stuck about where I wanted to put it. 
but by uh, doing this separately, I'll show you in a second, I can now say group group these. Uh, so control G to group them. And now when I select it, it just selects everything and I can put it here. And in fact, if I make the uh, fill color white, you can see I can put it in front of things and it uh, and it updates nicely. It doesn't have hidden lines coming through or any sort of weirdness, that sort of thing. Right, uh, the final thing I'll do is quickly add some color to the uh, sides. So open up my swatches. I'm going to uh, start selecting some shapes selecting by their borders and I'll select uh, multiple at once I hold down shift uh, there's no so what I'm doing is selecting all of the surfaces which are parallel to each other and that makes it sort of read a little bit more uh, three-dimensionally and in fact let's go back and now we've decided to not or leave that open let's decide to go back and here we go, I've selected that shape there and see it reads a bit more three-dimensionally. Now for this one here, if I, it's a, that's a group, so I'll right click and ungroup it for a second. I've got this path here. Now if I shade that in completely, it probably should stop around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Control Z to that. I'm going to, under the eraser tool, I'm going to select the scissor tool and I'm going to click once here and click once here and what that's done is it's divided the shape into two. So I'm just going to select this one and hold down, uh, give it the color and there we go. It's given uh, sort of a color that sort of fades out a little bit like a shadow I guess. So maybe the light's coming from that direction. Anyway, uh, that uh, completes this tutorial. Uh, it's, you know, you might create uh, an axonometric uh, generator from your uh, 3D model, uh, but if you're just playing with ideas, you really want to create create a, a quick sketch of a diagram or, uh, or you just want to show somebody a, a really clean sort of axonometric to give them the idea of what you mean by different... Uh, uh, rectilinear shapes or circular shapes intersecting, this isn't a, isn't a bad option. So uh, thanks for watching.